If you were to ask most Queen fans what the band's best albums are, they will most likely reply with News of the World, The Works, Innuendo, and A Night at the Opera. However, one album that many forget about is A Day at the Races. This is mainly since it presents itself as a part two to A Night at the Opera. This is evident particularly when looking at the artwork. Both are bold, striking, showcasing the Queen emblem in all its glory, along with the title just below. Moreover, they both stick to one solid colour. The 1975 album is white, while A Day at the Races is black. Clearly, the similarities do not end here. In terms of the music, both albums begin with heavy tracks. Death on Two Legs with A Night at the Opera, and Tie Your Mother Down with A Day at the Races. Listen, I could continue listing the many similarities both albums share, although we would be here all day. So with that said, I wish to now address how this album stands out from its predecessor. A Day at the Races knew it had to follow up a masterpiece, and this links into why the 1976 album is overshadowed by its twin, and therefore overlooked, which is a shame. Yet you have to remember that the 1975 album features some astonishing tracks. There's You're My Best Friend, a classic. Love of My Life, a beautifully crafted number, The Prophet's Song, and finally, Bohemian Rhapsody, which is self-explanatory. Arguably, A Day at the Races didn't surpass A Night at the Opera. When it comes to the tracks featured and the overall quality of the album, though, it would be idiotic of me to discard the fact that the 1976 album showcases some of the band's greatest songs. This is most apparent with Somebody to Love, a single it seems as though I haven't discussed yet. So firstly, the instrumentals. It showcases the variety found on here, as the number employs elements of gospel music with how the voices of Freddie, Roger, and Brian are made to sound like a choir of people. But it doesn't stray away from Queen's rock sensibilities, because there is obviously a guitar solo by Brian May. As for Mercury's vocal performance, it's spectacular, showcasing the incredible range he had. And honestly, I haven't witnessed anyone sing this song as well as Freddie Mercury, although George Michael was a close contender. In terms of the lyrics, the meaning is as clear as day. Freddie touches on how he is desperate for both love and meaning in his life, praying that it will one day come. I just gotta get out of this prison one day. One song that is often disregarded is You Take My Breath Away. Now, this track does indeed reflect the similarities this album shares with its predecessor. This is because Take My Breath Away can be thought of as a more depressing version of Love of My Life. Yet, the track conveys a different emotion, which stops it from being called unoriginal. But where does the melancholic ambience of this number stem from? The piano and Freddie's vocal performance, of course. Mercury's vocals have a somewhat breathy quality to them. As for the piano, it's the basis for this number. In fact, it's fairly sparse in terms of the instrumentals, especially when compared to Queen's other tracks. But that's exactly what makes this song so beautiful. It's raw, and that's only further conveyed through the lyrics, which create this idea of someone who is madly in love. I would give up all my life for just one kiss. They will do anything for this other person. Good Old Fashioned Lover Boy. It's unlike anything else the band released, showcasing the originality this album possesses, with how it adds to the established Queen formula. When asked about the single, this is what Mercury had to say. Yes, it's called um, Good Old Fashioned Lover Boy. 
and it's in my sort of ragtime mood that I sort of get a, a chance to <laughs> to do on every album. And um, yes. Lyrically, it describes a good old-fashioned lover boy who is looking forward to a night of romance. The track gradually builds itself up first beginning with solely Freddie and the piano, until the bass, guitar, and drums come in. The best section of this song is arguably the bridge, which adds a unique spin to the number, throwing you off guard. On the subject of Tio Toriati, it acts as a fantastic way to end A Day at the Races, with many Queen fans adoring this song. If you didn't know already, it was solely released as a single in Japan, which makes sense considering two choruses are sang in Japanese. At first, the track creates a sense of tension, yet the drums come in, and by the end it has this anthemic quality to it. It, with many voices singing in unison. In terms of the lyrics, it's dedicated to Queen's Japanese fans, as it addresses how the band still want their fans to remember them through this song when they are gone. <laughs> In conclusion, A Day at the Races is an album that is often overlooked. This is due to the fact that it presents itself as a part two to A Night at the Opera, therefore being overlooked. However, this shouldn't be the case. Sure, it does borrow many elements from the 1975 album, although A Day at the Races develops on what was established, with the best example being how the band experimented with a greater variety of genres, and even went as far to write part of a song's lyrics in Japanese. So please, I ask you, give A Day at the Races a listen, you won't regret it.